which are an active day like today. You may find that you have to do some active sweeping out of the mind before it's ready to settle down. So just remind yourself that what you did this morning, what you did this afternoon, sweep it out, sweep it out, sweep it out. It's not a concern right now. What you're planning to do tomorrow, just sweep it out. You've got the present moment. Try to make the most of it. You have no other responsibilities, no other things you have to do or think about. This is one of the big ironies of human life, is that we all want free time. But when we get free time, we don't know what to do with it. We're at loose ends. We fill it up with all kinds of styrofoam peanuts and wood shavings. So sweep them out. And if you find the mind wandering back to those things in the course of the hour, just cut it off, cut it off. There's one of the giants in Thailand tells you to think of your mind having a knife. Any thought that comes up, just cut right through it. And come back to the breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, and notice where you feel that sensation of breathing in the body. You may feel the air coming in through the nose, but you can also feel the rise and fall of the chest, the rise and fall of the shoulders. Energy flow in different parts of the body. Focus on whichever sensation seems most comfortable. And allow it to have some freedom. In other words, you don't want to clamp down on it. Give it some space so that it can feel free and open. And then notice what kind of rhythm the, the breath develops as you allow it to be comfortable, as you give it this space. And wherever you sense that sense of ease, think of the ease spreading out from that spot. Again, to prevent that sense of clamping down on the breath. We do have this habit, and we tell ourselves you're going to, we're going to focus on something. We tighten it up. We squeeze it to keep it pinned down. Well, you can't pin down the breath. And the more you try to pin it down, You're going to, more than you're going to mess up the energy in the body. So allow the breath to have its freedom. Simply, you want to make your gaze as continuous as possible. All the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And just make that your, your game for the evening. How continuous can you keep your gaze on the breath? And if you find it slipping off, I'll just come right back. Don't get upset. Don't get discouraged. Just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. And so you give the mind something good to do with its free time. You're developing good qualities. Your persistence, your mindfulness. And when you really are ardent at this, the mind will settle down. And when the mind settles down, it's got a home, got a good, safe place to stay. So look carefully at what you're doing. Try to monitor the mind. It's almost like one mind is watching the breath, and another mind is watching the mind itself. This is a quality of alertness. And although your prime focus should be on the breath, still you have to keep tabs on the mind as well to gain a sense of when it's beginning to wander off and stray into thoughts of what happened today or what's going to happen tomorrow. You just say, no, right here, right here, right here. All the important things you need to know about are right here. 
So look carefully right here, but simply allow right here to have a sense of freedom. This is the balancing act we do as we meditate. On the one hand, you want to keep the mind right here at the same On the other hand, you want it to not have a sense of being imprisoned here. It's one of the best ways of doing that is to get it really interested in what's going on here. Think about the activities you may have done in your life where you really got absorbed. And it wasn't because you were forcing yourself to be with that activity. It's like drawing, engaged in any of the arts or any craft that has you absorbed, that has you interested. It's, it's because you're interested in it that you can get absorbed. Now, as mastery develops, there's also a sense of fluidity that you think of doing something and you'd find it very easy to do it. That gets you even more absorbed. There's no sense of awkwardness. That takes time. In the beginning, working with a meditation, you may find a certain awkwardness. In fact, that the mind doesn't seem to be settling down quite the way you'd like it to. There's something in the way. But if you take an interest in the process, that quality of interest gets over a lot of that awkwardness. As you begin to see what what connects, what keeps the mind here, what pulls it away, what can bring it back. And as for anything else that might be nibbling away at the edges of your awareness, just let it go, let it go, let it go. You've got something right here that you can really focus on and really learn from. Because everything you experience in the present moment has an element of intention. There's an intention here that focuses you on one thing rather than another. And there's an intention in the way you pay attention to certain feelings, not other feelings, certain perceptions, not other perceptions, certain thoughts, certain sensations in the body. And that element of intention is the really important thing that we're after here seeing how we shape our experience out of the potentials that are here. There are potentials for pain in the body, there are potentials for pleasure. There are potentials for irritation, there are potentials, potentials for ease. And so what you want to learn how to do is focus on the helpful potentials. And as you do that, you learn an awful lot about this process of intention. And it gives you a sense of the power you have when you're choosing to focus on something. And you can, from that skillful focus, you can fabricate things skillfully and create a sense of ease, even in the midst of a lot of pain. This is an important skill to develop. You might scan through the body and see where there's some tension that you're holding on to, and then very consciously breathe in and relaxing that tension all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, and then through the next, and the next, and the next. Get good at that. And you realize you've got a skill that you can apply to other patterns of tension in the body, the way the you tend to tense up around pain, and it gives you a more solid foundation where you can feel a bit more interest in trying to understand the process of pain itself, to see to what extent you're actually making the pain worse by the way you think about it, the way you perceive it. When you can see how your intentions in the present moment have a big impact on your experience, that gives you a lot to explore. And you begin to see the relevance of this meditation. Because it keeps reminding you, you do have the ability to choose what you're going to focus on and when you focus on it, what you're going to do with it. And you could sit here and spend the whole hour making yourself miserable, or you could focus on sensations of ease, sensations of fullness that go with the breath, allowing them, just allowing them to spread through the body. <clears throat> and creating a very strong sense of well-being right here. And 
you realize you've got an important skill that you can take into other aspects of your life, other times when there's pain, other times when there's weakness, when there's illness. You're not totally a victim of things. You have a handle on how you can look at things, understand them, work with them. So you can create this sense of well-being even in the midst of a lot of pain and a lot of disappointment, a lot of difficulty. Because as the Buddha points out, the, the extent to which the mind is suffering has very little to do with things outside and very much to do with how the mind is processing things outside. It is possible to live in difficult situations and not suffer. And so this is the basis of that skill, learning how to stay in the present moment and look at what the mind is doing in the present moment, how it handles the potentials that are right here, so you can make the most of them, create a sense of ease and well-being, a sense of feeling at home here. And you can inhabit right here and not get pushed out by pains and not get pushed out by unpleasant emotions. You're here first. Keep reminding yourself of that. That's an important perception to hold in mind. It's the same as the body. Pains come and go, but the body was here first. The breath was there first. All too often when a pain comes up, we tend to tense up around it and create a blockage in the way the blood flows. And then that holds as a perception that you, it's nothing can get through that blockage. The breath can't get through it, and the breath gets confined to a narrow space. But remind yourself, the breath was there first. The flow of the blood was there first. The pain came later. Then you find it easier for the, your awareness to spread there, the, the flow of energy to spread there. It's your space, it's not the pain space. The pain came later. Don't let it hem you in. And learn how to use this perception with other things that seem to be holding you in, confining you. The perception of confinement that's what's actually holding you in. When you can drop that perception, you find that you have a lot more freedom. You have a foundation from which you can deal with these things so that they're not overwhelming. You are larger than they are. Your awareness is deeper, larger, totally unlimited. When you learn how to perceive the problems of the world as small and your awareness is a lot larger, that puts you in a much better position. And so working with the breath is a way of putting you in that position. So take some interest in what's going on, how you perceive the situation in the present moment, and how those perceptions may be contributing to the suffering that's really not necessary. So a lot of important things are going on right here, right now. What you're doing right now is the main factor in determining whether you're going to suffer from the situation or not. There's that line in Paradise Lost where Satan says, you know, the mind can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. Of course, he's in hell at the time and he's trying to think he can make a heaven out of it. It sounds very noble. But you have to remember, he also made a hell out of heaven. That's why he couldn't stay there. All too often our mind is like that. Things are not all that bad, but we make them a lot worse than they have to be. But learn how to turn that power around. Maybe when things are bad, you can make them not so bad. At the very least, you can learn how not to suffer from them. And that's an important skill, probably the most important skill you can ever develop.
to take some interest in what's happening right here, right now. As for what happened today and what's going to happen tomorrow, just let it drop away, drop away, drop away. At the moment, the past is just a series of perceptions, just some memories. Tomorrow is just a series of perceptions, anticipations. They don't have the actual reality that your breath has right now. The breath is right here. So take some interest in how the mind relates to the breath. You can learn how to see what you can learn about the mind as you try to keep it anchored here. Because the more you understand your own mind, the more you're able to understand the powers it has and learn how to use those powers wisely. <laughs>